ladies and gentlemen. This program is for you, not your children. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, brings you Dragnet. <laughs> Detective Sergeant, you're assigned the Juvenile Bureau. A worried mother calls your office and reports that her four-year-old twin girls are missing. Hours pass. The children fail to turn up. Your job? Find them. You'll be amazed when you compare Fatima with other long cigarettes. You'll find they now cost the same. But in Fatima... The difference is quality. You see, Fatima is the quality king-size cigarette because it contains the finest domestic and Turkish tobaccos superbly blended. And Fatima is extra mild with a much different, much better flavor and aroma than any other long cigarette. So compare Fatima yourself. Fatimas now cost the same as other long cigarettes, but your first puff will tell you... Ah, that's different. Yes, in Fatima, the difference is quality. Ask your dealer for Fatima, the quality king-size cigarette. Best of all long cigarettes. Start enjoying Fatima tomorrow. <laughs> The documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law to an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Saturday, August 7th. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working a day watch out of Juvenile Bureau. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Inspector Bowen. My name's Friday. It was 7.35 p.m. when we got to where we parked our car. 80K. Let's see, man. Uh, the house is back that way, huh? Yeah. You like to swing around here, huh? Yeah, I... Now I'm on that side. Okay. Plenty of room here. No, you better wait a minute. Huh? Okay, it's all clear now. I don't know about you. I think there's something sour about the whole thing. Well, wait till we check at the house. The kids might have turned up while we were going. I hope so. Should hate to go back there empty-handed. Not one lousy lead. It's hard to figure. The little girls just wandered off. Somebody should have spotted them by this time. Unless there was some kind of an accident. Yeah. What time you got? Hmm. Twenty minutes to eight. Five hours. That's a long time for a pair of four-year-olds to be out of sight, and the parents are going to be worried sick when you tell them. Let's get up the next block, you know. Oh, yeah. Might as well pull up right here. Huh? Yeah, that's good. Go. Lousy job. I'll put in with you. Oh, the officers come in. Thank you. Have you heard anything? No, sir, not too much, Mr. Carson. We just finished checking the neighborhood. Somebody around must have seen the kids. Did you talk to everybody? We checked out all the names you gave us, eh? Everyone who knows your little girl, the kids they play with, their friends, parents, storekeepers in the area. But somebody had to see them. They gotta be around someplace. If Joan and Tilly got lost in that park, I know they would have headed up toward home. What is it? You find it? No, we're still checking this, Carson. There's nothing much to tell you right now. Dear God, somebody's got it, see? Tilly and Joan couldn't have wandered off that far. I don't think it's as bad as it might seem to you, ma'am. Children have been missing a lot longer than your two little girls and turned up all right. Just try to relax, Miss Carson. Why hasn't somebody been? 
to run it out from the park, but it's only three blocks from the house. Why isn't somebody saying, Darka, God knows what could have happened to me, you know? Take it easy, honey. Don't start imagining things. I think it's just a matter of time, ma'am. We've got three teams of men working on it with us. Gotten out of broadcast on your girl. It's tough to just stand up on the street in the pit. Yes, ma'am, we did. We checked out all the names you could give us. There is one thing we wanted to ask you about. What's that, Sergeant? Well, about the spot in the park where you had your picnic this afternoon where the little girls wandered off from. Exactly where I pointed it out to the other officers by the eucalyptus grove. Right off 7th Avenue. Just about 2.30 this afternoon. We finished lunch. Frank was taking a nap and I was eating. I saw the girls playing tag over by the tree. I looked up and came out and they were gone. Just like I told the other officers. Then you're sure about that location, huh? I'm sure. Where shall I lie to you? I want to find the girl. Please find her. Yes, ma'am. Come on, honey. Take it easy, huh? It, it's just never happened to us before, Sergeant. Joan and Tilly's never gone off like this. It, it, it's not like them, that's all. It's only babies, really. Yes, sir. Would you like me to get that for you, Mr. Carson? Yes, sir. Would you please? Sure. I don't know if I can or not. I don't keep a daily log, you know. They didn't tell me how to do that. 
Well, tell us where you were between noon and six tonight. That's all we want to know. That's quite a bit, don't you think? Well, as I told you, I was playing canasta with a maiden Matt. Would that shock you? Look, we're not in the mood for smart answers. You just give us an alibi we can check, that's all. I don't know why you always have to bother me when something happens. You made your own reputation. We didn't. Now, what about it? I left my apartment about 11.30 this morning. I went down to Union Hall and paid my dues. Had lunch with some friends. The Blue Pigeon out in Wilcox. Then we went on a tour of one of the studios. All right. So your friends confirm that story for you? No, no, they won't. They left town tonight. The 815 train for San Francisco. Oh, yes, Mr. Selden. A special friend of mine from up north, Graham, wants to hear Indian love call, okay? Certainly, Mr. Selden, right away. What about it, Graham Burns? Who's docking for your alibi? Already told you, my friends left town. You can check with a guard at the movie studio if you want. We had a pass. Time punched in, time punched out. It should be all there. You want to call and check that studio? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to be rude, Sergeant. I always did feel that registration business was unfair. Oh, is that so? Of course. Grossly unfair. So how do you suggest we keep track of you? Why do I have to be kept track of anyway? You know as well as I do, your record... It was all a lie. I hardly even touched the kid. I paid my time anyway. Why can't you give me a break? Every time something happens to a kid, I have a cop on my name. Were you in the 7th Avenue Park at any time today, Grambler? What? Were you in the 7th Avenue Park today? As a matter of fact, I was, yeah. I took a walk there. What time was that? I don't know. I left my friends after lunch. Came home to freshen up about 1.30, I guess. I was in the park about 1.45, 2 o'clock. Only stayed a few minutes. When did you leave? About two fifteen. You went from the park to meet your friends at the studio. Exactly right. Yes. Did you see two dark-haired little girls while you were in the park? No, I didn't see anybody. I was by myself. Mm -hmm. You sure of that? Well, of course I'm sure. But if I did see him, it wouldn't mean anything. I don't molest kids. I don't get along with them. That's all. Another one, Graham. I wonder if you'd mind playing Diane. Anniversary party, you know. Oh, all right. Thanks, Graham. What I'm saying, Sergeant, it's the truth. I couldn't hurt a little kid. I never could. No one said you have. Well, I know, but I just want you to know how I feel. Maybe I don't get along with kids, but I couldn't hurt them. Little girls especially. I like kids, really. I just don't understand how I like them. It's a real strange thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, can I see? Did you talk to the studio? Yeah, I checked with the girl. What did you say? Bramberg was there from 2.30 to 4.30. He double-checked the time. Yeah. His alibi is good. 10.55 p.m. The four-year-old Carson girls were still missing. A special detail of men from homicide were assigned to a general canvas of stores and homes in the park area. All the residents were questioned. No one had seen the children. 11.20 p.m. We headed back to the Carson home. I'm all out of smokes, Joe. You got some? No, I'm out, too. The drugstore up ahead, I guess we'll get some there, huh? Yeah. That car in front of us. That's Wilkie and Bates' car, isn't it? Let's see. Yeah. Oh, here's Wilkie coming out of the drugstore. Hey, Will? Hey, Mel? Joe? Just talked to the office. Hey, Will? They got a call from the valley station a few minutes ago. Yeah? The little girls, they've been found. <laughs> Listening to Dragnet for the step by step solution to tonight's authentic case history. Here, step by step, are the actual reasons why Fatima is the quality king size cigarette. Why in Fatima the difference is quality? Quality of tobaccos, the finest domestic and Turkish varieties. Extra mild and superbly blended to give you a much different, much better flavor and aroma. Quality of manufacture. Smooth, round, perfect cigarettes. Rolled in the finest paper money can buy. Manufactured in the newest and most modern of all cigarette factories. Quality even to the appearance of the bright, clean, golden yellow package. Carefully wrapped and sealed to bring you Fatima's rich, fresh, extra mild flavor. Compare Fatima yourself. Fatima's now cost the same as other long cigarettes, but your first puff will tell you... Ah, that's different. Yes, in Fatima, 
The difference is quality. Insist on Fatima. Start enjoying the quality king-size cigarette. Fatima. Best of all long cigarettes. got the word that the four-year-old Carson twins had been found, Ben and I drove back to the office where Inspector Bowling filled us in. A few minutes past 11 p.m., a motorist out in the valley spotted the two small girls walking hand-in-hand hand along a deserted side road off Ventura Boulevard. Their clothing was dirty and torn. They were alone. The motorist picked them up, took them to the Valley Division Station where the girls were identified. We sent out a partial cancellation on the APB. The twin girls were taken to the Georgia Street Receiving Hospital where they were treated for cuts and bruises. Then they were returned to their home. The doctor reported that both girls had been criminally molested. The search for the abductor went on. Late the next day, Ben and I drove out to the Carson home to talk to the twins, Joan and Tilly. We had no luck at all. They were still shaken up from the excitement and shock of their experience. They went back to the living room with their mother, Helen Carson. It was the same thing this morning when I tried to question them. They just don't want to talk about it. Must have been horrible for us. Did they tell you anything at all, Mrs. Cross? Well, Joan just refuses to talk about it. She says the man was big. That's all I could get out of him. Tilly seems a little more willing to talk, though. She's always been a little more forward than Joan ever since they were babies. Well, let's see. Well, could she add anything at all to what your other little girl told you about the man? She told her father the man had a mistake. Probably impressed her because my husband wears one, too. Mm-hmm. Pretty certain she's right about that. I can usually tell when she's making up things. Well, how about the way the man was dressed, his clothes? No, they didn't mention anything particular. Tilly told me the man was dirty. She said it two or three times. Dirty, dirty clothes. She might admit the man had work clothes on. She had so many expressions, I don't know. Well, how did the man get your little girls into the truck? Did he offer them candy or something like that? Well, Tilly said something about a kitten. The man had a little kitten and he was going to give it to them. I told him about that once. I told him a thousand times. Stay away from strangers. Don't go with them. Yes, ma'am. Did they tell you anything else at all about the man's description? Mm-hmm. Tilly said the man was big. I don't know if you could count on that. Everybody looks big to her. I talked to her an hour, but she just kept repeating the same story. The man made them cry, tore their dresses, hurt them. Just horrible for them. Yes, ma'am. Did they tell you anything at all about the truck the man was driving? Maybe the color or something like that? Well, Tilly called it a big car, funny big car. She said it was red with red pictures all over it. You can't put much faith in that, though. Why not, ma'am? Well, everything's red to Tilly now. Everything has red pictures on it. Just the face she's going through. A few weeks ago, it was blue. Everything was blue to her. Now it's red. Everything's red. I see. Well, you think they might be able to tell you a little more in a day or so after they've quieted down? Well, I don't know. I certainly hope so. Thank God it's all over. Their home's safe. That's all that counts. Oh, well, ma'am, I'm afraid there's more to it than that. What? The man that did it's still free. Monday, August 9th. The search for the suspect went on. All of us, the men from juvenile and homicide detail, were pretty much feeling our way in the dark. Repeated questioning of residents living in the area where the abduction took place netted us nothing. Our two star witnesses, the four year old twins, were able to contribute little. We stayed on it. Another three days of pounding the pavement, knocking on doors, and asking stock questions led nowhere. As in most cases, like this one, the criminal enjoyed the distinct advantage of having victims who were unable, because of their age, to clearly identify him. Tuesday, August 10th. In the late afternoon, we got a call from a Bernice Hopper, a real estate agent in the West Hollywood area. 4.15 p.m. Ben and I drove out to interview her. Excuse me, officer. Let us just find that listing book first. Right ahead, Miss Helen. I just know it's got to be here someplace. Well, yesterday morning, I remember just think... Oh, here it is. There. Now I can start to do business again. Well, I don't know if this is going to help you any in your case, officers, but I certainly think something should be done about it. Flagrant. That's the only word I can think of, just flagrant. Tell us about it, ma'am. Well, I saw him yesterday, for one thing. So I was coming back from lunch about 2.30 in the afternoon. Mondays, I always have late lunch. Yes, I see. I was passing the corner a few blocks from the grammar school right up above on Prospect Avenue. 
And I saw this truck parked, and this truck driver leaning out of the window talking to some children. Just stopped. They were just stopped. Yes, ma'am. What happened? Well, what happened? It's not so much that. It's just the way this truck driver was talking to these children. I must have been at least 20 feet from them, and even I could hear. What was that, ma'am? He was buying it. Just filthy. I couldn't understand a grown man talking to little cops like that. Every kind of filth, every obscene word you think of. Flagrant, just flagrant. Was there any point in the way he was talking to the children, Miss Harper? I mean, was he mad at them? Did he seem sober? Or what was he? Mm-hmm. Filth, that's all I know of. He was dirt and filth. Some of the children didn't like it, and they told him. That only made him do it all the more. I really think you ought to check up on him. Yes, ma'am. Well, can you tell us anything else about it? Oh, you excuse me, Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. How do you do? My name's Henry Popper. May I help you? Uh, how do you do? I'm Arthur Tomlinson. You, you showed me in the wife's place last weekend. Oh, yes. Of course, Mr. Tomlinson. A cottage out in Norwich, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Well, the wife and I certainly didn't like it. She wants me to put a deposit on it. Still for sale, I guess. Well, no. As a matter of fact, I sold it Monday. It's just like I told you. Things go fast. Of course, you had a substantial down payment to make at the time. Oh, yeah. It did take me a few days to get some money together. That's too bad. We well, certainly love the place. Well, that's too bad, I guess. Oh, I'm very sorry, Mr. Thomas. There wasn't anything I can do. Oh, yeah, I, I know that. Well, thanks anyway, ma'am. I... I guess we'll keep looking. Something may turn up. Oh, I'm sure it will. Thanks for stopping by again, Miss Thompson. Yeah. Bye. Oh, my. Everybody wants something to nothing. They want houses, but they don't show the money. You know what was it? The truck driver that you saw there? Oh, yeah. Well, after hearing that talk of his, I just copied down the license number of the truck I got right here in my desk. How about the truck driver, ma'am? Did you get a good look at him? I certainly did. The way he acted with those children. Anything unusual about his appearance? No, nothing besides his foul mouth. He was tall, dark, had a mustache. Ties in. One more thing. The truck he was driving. Yes, ma'am. There were pictures painted on the side. Circus animals, I think. Did you notice the color? Oh, yes. It was red. Even the pictures are red. <laughs> 4.45 p.m. We took the license number of the truck which Bernice Hopper had given us and drove back to the office and checked it through DMV. We found the truck was registered to a commercial baking firm in the south end of town. Through their personnel department and their dispatcher's office, we got the name and address of the employee who was driving the truck the same day Bernice Hopper had spotted the driver talking to the school children. His name was Lester Wiley. We checked a little further, found that he was driving the same truck the day the Karsten twins were abducted. We called into R and I. Wiley had no criminal record. Six thirty p.m. We located the suspect at his home, an old style green and white bungalow on the edge of the Highland Park district. He sat in the dining room and drank some kind of sweet wine from a large water glass while we questioned him. That's yeah, just stupid of me, huh? I didn't even ask if you wanted some of this. Oh, well, thank you, Wiley. I'd like to have you explain about your language in front of those cool kids. Nothing to explain. Bunch of those kids are hanging around the truck. Or maybe they wanted to get in and grab some of the cakes and stuff. I read them off, that's all. Well, that still doesn't explain the filthy language, Wiley. Mm, I don't know. Maybe I wasn't feeling good that day. Might have let a few cuss words slip. I didn't mean anything by it. I like kids. Do you usually make deliveries up around that school area, Wiley? Once in a while, yeah. I get around quite a bit. That's not what they tell us down where you were. Huh? You had no business in the neighborhood of that school. You deliver rots on the other end of town. So I can't drive where I want, huh? I get the deliveries made. What are they squawking about? I'd like to know what you were doing up in that neighborhood. I was on my lunch hour. Drove out to see a friend. I got a friend living near the school. What's the matter, anyway? Don't you think you've had enough of this? Look, you're not telling me what I have to do in my house. It's my house. I want a glass of wine? I have it. You're not telling me what to do. All right, Wally, just take it easy. Take it easy, nothing. I talked to you too long enough. There's the door. You're not coming in here telling me what to do. You better get your coat. We'll talk downtown. We're not talking any place. Now, get out. Get out of this house right now. Afraid your alibi's not going to hold up, Wally? Is that it? I don't know what you're talking about. You're trying to frame me. Don't you think I know that? That doesn't make much sense. Why should we want to frame you? 
I know what you're getting at. I know just what you're getting at. Those two little girls last week, you're going to say I took them. You're going to say I did things to them. Well, I didn't. It had anything to do with it. Didn't you? Oh, no. No, I didn't. Oh, look, I'm sorry. Why don't you sit down? I didn't mean what I said. Because I just got nervous. Sure, well, we understand. Why don't you want me to get a couple of glasses, huh? Have some of this wine. Warms you up. Good. No, oh, thank you. Just like to have you straighten us out on a couple of things, and we'll let you alone. Yeah? I'd like to know if you can account for your time between 12 noon and 11 p.m. last Saturday. <coughs> that's the day somebody picked up those two old girls, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Wiley? I don't know. I was making deliveries like I always do. Up to 11 o'clock at night? I was a little late, yeah. Nothing unusual, though. That's so? Mm. Not a working day, so... Good morning. I might have been near the park where those kids were. Doesn't mean anything, though. I get around quite a bit. A lot of deliveries to make. All right, come on. How about it, Wally? Hmm? Did you grab those two little girls? Why did you go? Uh, All right, mister, that's enough. Get out of my house. Get out of my house. All right, Ben, get them on him. Yeah. Oh, you never prove it, you know that. Now, what about it, Wally? It's a use. It's no good at all. You want to tell us about it? I didn't mean it, that's all. I didn't mean it. Just once in a while, something goes wrong with me. I like kids. I like them too much, I guess. I didn't mean to hurt them. You ready to go now? Anything you say. I thought I had it with me when I grabbed the kids. What? I thought I was in my coat pocket. Glad I lost it. Glad you lost what? The pocket knife. I was going to kill him. The story you have just heard was true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. On December 10th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 87, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you. Friends, as you might have heard me say before, on Dragnet, we try to present the kind of entertainment that you want. You're the boss. We feel the same way about Fatimas. If you like them, you'll smoke them. It's just that simple. As for me, I like them. But what's more important, I'm convinced that you will, too. Fatimas have a much different, much better flavor and aroma than any other long cigarette. So I suggest that you buy a pack of patinas and see for yourself. When you do, I'm sure you'll agree with me and thousands of other regular patina smokers. In Fatima, the difference is quality. Lester Wiley waived his rights to a preliminary hearing. And at his arraignment in Superior Court, he entered a plea of guilty to one count of kidnapping and one count of child molesting. He received the sentence as prescribed by law and is now serving his term in the state penitentiary. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice for Dragnet comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Fatima Cigarettes. Best of all long cigarettes has brought you Dragnet, portions transcribed from Los Angeles. <laughs>